cannabis industry next year? Uh, 2020, I think there's going to be a lot of consolidation. Um, I think that a lot of these bigger companies that you know weren't built right and had a solid foundation are going to start consolidating with some of the bigger companies because when it rains, you don't want to get wet. So I think getting under the umbrella of some of these bigger companies, um, I think that this will be the year of brands. I think that brands are really going to start to emerge. You know, um, you see a lot of entertainers and athletes, like you said, you know, starting to join the industry. So obviously, you know, you want to use their influence in a positive way. So I think that brands are really going to start, you know, trying to separate themselves. You know, that's one of the plays for us is, you know, really trying to increase our visibility. Um, our motive is being, you know, we are a lifestyle brand with purpose. And our purpose is about, you know, empowering, uplifting, you know, the black and minority community, the communities that was most affected by the war on drugs and trying to create true opportunities for ownership and obviously job creation. So for 2020, we see actually a lot of hemp uh, on the horizon. There seems to be a lot more of those licenses coming on board. In addition, we see that there's still going to be a tightening in the economy and it's all really going to be a lot about execu execution for companies, both on the ancillary side and on the license side, whether you're a uh, retailer, a processor, or a cultivator, it's really going to be about making sure they execute on what you say you're going to do because it's going to be harder to get money uh, at least over the next six to 12 months. Well, as you know, in this industry, it is, uh, it's crazy. We're trying to figure out what's going to happen next week. Um, but I guess in a couple of weeks, it will be 2020. Uh, and we have been looking forward to uh, think about how the industry will look uh, next year. And I, I think that you're going to see uh, the bigger, more serious players that are focusing on the science, uh, that are uh, not focusing on the hype, uh, per se, but uh, more on the science. Uh, are going to flourish and you're going to see a lot of operators, the smaller growers unfortunately uh, that maybe got into the business without really knowing what they were doing 100%. Uh, um, uh, with, and I spoke with a few yesterday and it's very, very unfortunate but it, it, it's just it's just the way it is and we're going to be seeing I think a little bit more of that next year. Predictions, it's I think it's going to continue to shake out. I think that there are players who are based on compliance and those that have the most serious approach to compliance and product quality uh, will be the winners. It takes a lot of capital to manage that in the most uh, profound way possible and I think that's going to shake out a lot of uh, industry newcomers who weren't quite prepared to have to operate at a, at a much more uh, dietary supplement, food and beverage type compliance level. So all of the folks um, making product, we're going to have to make it in a way at, at such a, a level of quality and compliance that others in the industry, not in cannabis, but in food and beverages and dietary supplements in general, acknowledge that we are now a part of that industry, um, not just something that gets to play outside of it.